Hello guys and welcome to Right VIP, the Right Show channel. My name is Serge and in today's video I want to read you guys some of your comments and I want to answer them right here in the comment section of my channel. So, uh, Tony, Tony, Tony writes, I once drove 15 minutes to a 27 dollar surge that disappeared the moment the arrow hit it that's right they do that to you so it's kind of like they want us to go to that surge area because they're lacking some people there but as soon as you arrive they screw you over by removing that surge or making it like two times less or three times less or just non-existent and then <clears throat> you will notice if you shut your app off just completely just get out of the app drive away from that surge and as soon as you uh, turn the, turn your um, app back on, you will no, notice that that surge is back in that same area. It's kind of like some kind of trick. Uh, and sometimes I've tested it like this too. Well, I'll drive back to that surge area with the app because um, I, I already know that it's there. So I shut the app back off and then I make it to that same area and then I quickly open up the app. And sometimes you have a couple seconds to respond. You could quickly uh, hit the surge. But if you do not, you do not go online as quickly as possible they will just remove that search because you're already there kind of crazy but that's what happens but anyways yeah i agree with you on that one this is why a lot of um right uh channels will recommend do not chase the surge it just will not be worth your while so witches and warlocks worldwide oh, wow that's uh interesting thank you for watching now do not cast any spells on me please um, I have enough already on me. <laughs> uh, Uber is no longer paying drivers the distance fee. That is right. I hate doing Uber in inner cities because it also forces you to go into areas you don't want to go. Some of these passengers are also part of exploiting drivers. Why would you want to inconvenience uh, the driver to drive far away to pick, pick you up? Yeah, exactly. And uh, another thing I noticed <clears throat> is uh, if I'm trying to strategize uh, myself, I try to basically think like, okay, I'm just going to take like short trips. So I could like, uh, continue, you know, um, I could continue like my quest. So I could finish it quicker. And then I'm focusing on very short pickups and drop offs. Let's say like in a uptown area, even though like, yeah, you probably don't prefer, prefer to work there. But usually uh, that is a good place to stay there, especially like on the weekend. Probably during a week, if there's nothing going on, like uh, there's no football game, no concert, probably not a good idea. But um, that being said, um, inner cities could help you complete those uh, quests. But I noticed, uh, let's say there's a ride in inner city, but it takes you like way out. Let's say like 30 miles away from uh, <clears throat> from the inner city. And then you know that area, not particularly that great for getting rides back. Here's what I noticed. Riders are, I don't know, like getting smart. So they'll book like a very short ride. And as soon as you hit accept, they will change up that ride. Like this happened to me recently. And then like the ride was only going to pay me like five bucks, right? It was a very short distance. And I know some of you guys probably don't like those trips, but I drove a very, uh, well, I picked them up and I started driving um, to pick them up. And then guess what? The ride got updated and it said uh, for Uber, it said uh, $20. Like, you know, it will tell you like when somebody updates it, like $20, but I'm like, well, $20. Okay. Well, it was five. So that means you know, you know, they don't want to pay you nothing. So that means $20 That's approximately 48 minute ride. You know, that's what they want to, you know, at most pay you. And uh, so I'm thinking, well, where is it going? I don't even know where the heck is going. I, I look and there's no way for me to find it. I'm like, okay, in that situation, I just cancel on the rider. I'm like, no, you're not going to do me like that. So anyways, uh, willpower. I realized this some time ago. Rich people do not tip. Working class people almost always show their appreciation where rich people almost never do. You know what? You're exactly correct. And it's because blue collar workers are generally uh, working in uh, like a service type of industry where they know what it feels like not getting tipped. And rich people just don't know that because they never had to feel that. So they're thinking like, well, I'm already paying for this very expensive trip. They should be happy to even have me here. You know, they got that entitlement mentality. Yes, you do have some rich people. I, I have some friends like that. Yeah, like they do tip their, you know, they do like some great things in the world. Not not in the world, but you know, you know what I mean. Uh, they, they're trying to, you know, do their part, but not all rich people. Some of them, they just don't know what it feels like and they will not tip like, like they feel like we're there to serve them and we should be 
thankful for them, you know, <clears throat> which we are thankful, but please, please tip me, you know, especially, you know, if I help you, whatever. Uh, case in point, I picked up this wealthy doctor in one of the most uh, prestigious uh, subdivisions in the city. We had a great conversation about cars and family and uh, how between him and his wife, kids, they owned about half a million dollars in automobiles and whatnot. I felt the surge, uh, this uh, obviously wealth uh, gentleman that I just picked up from his million plus dollar home would surely tip. Nope. E Exactly. And this is why I notice rich people never tip because I look and you know how you could like go in your like uh, mail in Uber and you could say like thanks for that tip and you could see what tip and what trip that was for. Well, I always look and there's nothing and I'm going to do a case in point too. Um, so you guys could know I, I had this rich, wealthy real estate developer in my vehicle, right? That I picked up from this very exclusive area, South Charlotte from this very exclusive uh, restaurant or whatever and they were headed home to their nice uh, multi-million dollar home but they wanted to save and they're like at the time it was still um it was still corona like like really heavily like going on like you have to wear a mask and nobody was allowed to sit in the front seat so these people like trying to save money they're like hey uh is, is uh they're like they really did not like even like ask me like that they're like hey uh can can i sit in the front um we have we just have um you know like like you know they just got their friends in there like uh yeah like i'm trying to like remember exactly so like i will tell you exactly so first of all they're not wearing masks which i never enforce masks myself uh i let people decide what they want to do so they're not wearing masks so i'm like yeah you sure you could sit like there was four people so they get in right so why am i saying they're trying to save money they didn't tell me that they want they wanted their friends to be dropped off at a different location and surely they did not at a stop so they did not at a stop and they're like hey uh can you can you uh drop our friends off um they're, they're just like living like, like half a mile away from us but really not they were not they live like pff, like two three miles away from them and they're like um i know i know it tells you to go straight but can you like make this left and then this right and then this left and then this right you know like in the neighborhood and oh yeah and this is their home so i dropped off their friends guess what uh, they they uh, said whatever whatever thank you to their friends because supposedly they also saved money uh, by getting a free ride from them and they're like yeah like acting like all proud of themselves so basically their friends didn't even feel the need to thank me right for taking them there and uh, they did not feel the need to even like tip something like hey at least like I don't know give like five bucks or something you just got a free ride bro you know so that was like him and his wife they got dropped off so then finally I'm taking this real estate uh, developer uh, and his wife to their residence and then I said to them uh, hey, sir, like, uh, you know, what do you, what do you do for a living? You know, that kind of thing. Because uh, he was messing with, like, my iPad. That, that guy was, like, sitting in the front seat. Uh, and he was, like, I have an iPad. And he was, like, messing with it, like, looking up all this different music and stuff like that. But then um, I asked him, what do you do? And he's, like, oh, I'm a real estate developer. And I said, oh, cool. Uh, I'm in real estate school right now. But this guy wasn't, like oh yeah great you know let me like let me know if you need any help or uh, some advice or whatever you know and um he was like very closed off and i could already tell um so i did not bother him like anymore and uh i didn't know where he lived so i pull up to this mansion right drive down a very long driveway at night and it's not a very lit like street like at all like uh which i don't have a backup camera so it makes it difficult for me to back up but anyways uh he gets out his wife gets out i don't hear no thank you like nothing and they just go to their house and i'm like okay i said bye uh, you know have a good one thanks you know like i do my thing so then i just you know back out whatever and i start driving you know uh, i start driving to my last pickup and uh i got a pickup which was like one mile away from their house wasn't that far and i come to the shopping center and uh and i always like when my doors open up my lights my interior lights all come on um you know and i look in the back seat i'm like there's an iphone there and i look and it's like uh it's an iphone uh it's an iphone 12 pro you know uh it was like not even a pro max but it was his wife's phone like i look on the phone like i'm like oh uh, it's a picture of them so it's like i recognize that it was them so my passenger gets in which was um a regular blue collar worker he gets in and i said you know sir uh i said uh, i'm i'm sorry like i don't want to like waste your time i said like my last passengers they forgot their phone do you mind if i drop this off real quick they're like one mile away he's like no i, I don't mind 
So I very quickly uh, just took the phone to that address uh, because I remembered where they lived. And then I knock on their door and like the guy like comes like, like they take their time to get there. Obviously, I mean, it is late, but like no smile on his face, nothing. And I said, uh, you know, sir, uh, your wife forgot her phone. And he's like, just just takes it. Doesn't say thank you. Doesn't give a tip. And I look on the, on the app. Surely enough, never, never left a tip at all. I even check like next day, nothing. And I'm like thinking, you know what? Like this just happens way, 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 way too many times. Um, and uh, I'm going to make one more little short story. And then that's it. Uh, we're we're going to go. And then um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to record another video like this. And uh, hopefully start a conversation with you guys. And uh, talk about something that maybe we all care about. But anyways, another story recently happened. I have taken somebody from Charlotte all the way to Concord. And if you know where Concord is, you know, it's a bit of a drive. I mean, not too far. But anyways, I've taken him there. And when I did, that guy forgot his um, forgot his uh, iPhone uh, 13 Pro Max. I have an iPhone 13 Pro Max. And so that, that guy, so, you know, I recognized it immediately. It was a nice phone and everything. Also, left it on my back seat. Like, I always ask everybody, check the back seat, make sure you get everything. You know what he told me? He's like, oh, yeah, I got everything. You know, like, they just, I think it's like an automatic response, and they just don't even look. But anyways, he left the phone, and I'm like, well, whose phone it is? And I look, uh, the, it was locked and everything, but it was a picture of that guy, and I remembered what he looked like. And again, this was like 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm still, like, on a streak. It's like, uh, you know, like, I, I have to, like, you know, continue working and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh. I tried to contact him through the app on Lyft. It was a Lyft ride. Nobody got back to me. Like, nobody got back to me on that. And I'm like, well, I don't want to, like, keep this guy's phone, you know, whatever. And he was telling me, like, he's, like, the multimillionaire. Like, he does, like, he... He sells like all this different stuff to the contractors, like uh, like a like big deal, like like it's huge, huge, huge builders and stuff. He sells them all the materials, and he was telling me how well he's doing stuff like that. But anyways, when we pulled up to his residence uh, before he got a chance to go out, he was like showing me his new uh, Ford Pro uh, Ford Raptor that he bought, like blah blah blah. You know, like I, I compliment him. Yeah, it's nice, and never gave a tip. Never gave a tip. Got out and uh, just went about his business and. But of course, when I already left, I already left Concord. I was already in Charlotte when I discovered that there was a phone because I was picking up my next passenger in Charlotte because I could not get anybody in Concord. So I wasted all the time driving to Charlotte to do a very short trip, you know, deliverance. Well, I don't know how short it was, but it was short enough to where like it was just in Charlotte. It didn't take me back to Concord. So I'm thinking, well, that, you know, I found the phone um, in the, so I'm thinking I'm going to take it back. To that area where the guy is I, I try to look him up on the app like what the address is because i already forgot where he lives you know and then once uh i looked it up yeah i could i could get his apartments or whatever it was this exclusive apartments but it was not not like a mansion or anything okay so i drove there i'm with like a my own dime uh, in my bmw at 19 miles per gallon like i wasted like fuel money and i got there and then uh what i did is i left his, uh, I didn't know where he, where he lived because it was apartments. So I put uh, the phone uh, where the fuel cap opens up on the Ford uh, Raptor. I stuck the phone inside of there. Like, man, it actually fit perfectly uh, over top of the fuel cap. So it would not like fall. And then I took one of my business cards, which I have like right VIP business cards. I wrote on the back of it and I, and I said, uh, sir, you forgot your phone last night, blah, blah, blah. You know, um, you know. Please, uh, you know, remove it before you start driving, you know, so it doesn't fall out or whatever. <clears throat> but anyways, uh, he ended up texting me the next day just saying, like, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. Uh, never never offered any money, any reward, like nothing for me bringing it back. Like, it was like a complete waste of time. It cost me money from his mistake and nothing. And this is, I have, like, more stories where that came from. I'm not, I'm not even going to waste your time with that. But since this kind of came up, this reminded me. And I just wanted to mention. And, guys, if you got a similar story, you know, write in the comments below. Like, like yeah, uh, as embarrassing as it is for, for these rich people, like, they're making them, themselves look bad. Uh, but, anyways, um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourself. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.